Coming up, we take you on a scenic flight over Maui, a real-world look at crosswind landings. Plus, we try our hand at home building and GA pilots coming together to honor a veteran. The OPA Live This Week begins in just a moment. There are many important things to consider before purchasing an aircraft. Let the experts at Aerospace Reports help guide you through the process. We combine expert knowledge with our long-standing commitment to personalized customer service to perfect your transaction. Learn more at aerospacereports.com. This is AOPA Live This Week with Tom Haynes and Melissa Rudinger. AOPA believes that airports funded by your tax dollars should be accessible to everyone. And that's what our fight against egregious FBO fees is all about. And we're celebrating a win at Rocky Mountain Airport in Colorado. The second FBO just opened for business. The new FBO is being run by Sheltair. It is in a temporary location while the company builds a new facility. The second FBO should bring competition to the airport, improving service and pricing for all users. Rocky Mountain was on our watch list of most complained about airports because of excess fees and high prices. We removed it from the list after the airport made improvements, including the second FBO. So a little bit of progress. Yes. Uh, we've got uh, a lot to do here yet. One of the, another big initiative we're working on is in addition to transparency for fees and pricing is, um, is trying to make sure that people are aware of places they can park, transient airplanes can park at some of these FBOs if they don't need the, the services on FBO. And, and uh, so uh, FAA, I know, has been hard at work, and you've been involved in some of those charting discussions about making those parking spaces visible on the charts. I have. We're doing a full court press on this entire initiative, and the charting is a, is a key piece of it. So yeah. we'll keep the pressure on. All right. And another win for AOPA advocacy. A brand new edition of the Grand Canyon Aeronautical Chart will be issued at the end of February, and it's about time. The chart was last updated in 2001. A few things have changed in 18 years. Some airports have gone away, unfortunately. Frequencies have changed, and oh, you haven't been able to contact a local flight service station for NOTAMs since 2005. AOPA and the National Park Service made a presentation to the FAA's aeronautical charting meeting about the chart's shortcomings. The FAA then agreed to update the Grand Canyon chart. The FAA is back in business after the 35-day government shutdown. Air traffic controllers and other essential personnel kept working, but according to the controllers union, the cost of the shutdown will be felt for years. The effects of the shutdown of, of all our technology and programs will be felt for years. The FAA stopped addressing, addressing risk that identified through our voluntary reporting system programs. And that is where we could say our system was less safe and is less safe today than it was on December 21st. And now there's a possibility that the agency won't be able to meet their 2020 mandate of ADSB. We lost months, we lost years, we lost time, we lost money, we lost energy, and we lost a lot of heart. Speaking to the Washington Aero Club this week, Rinaldi said that some controllers have moved up their retirements and the Controller Academy in Oklahoma City can't graduate people fast enough to replace the controllers leaving. He called for funding reform for the FAA. Now that the federal government is open again, President Trump is scheduled to deliver the State of the Union address on February 5th. And with that comes a TFR even further restricting the airspace around Washington, D.C. If you are flying in the area next week, be sure to check for your NOTAMs. And if you're flying around Atlanta this weekend without checking NOTAMs, you could see an interception. And we're not talking about the football kind. The airspace around Atlanta will be highly restricted for the Super Bowl. And the military will be standing by to intercept wayward aircraft. Earlier this week, the Air National Guard did practice intercepts of a Civil Air Patrol Cessna 182 to simulate a rogue airplane around the Super Bowl. You can find the details about the TFR on our website. And there are gonna be a bunch of GA airplanes headed for Atlanta. More than 1,600 aircraft expected to fly to the air, air airports. Most of them headed to PDK Airport, and among all those biz jets, something new. Bombardier will be showing off its newest, the Global 7500. The newly certified twin jet will be front and center at Signature Flight Supports to call Peachtree facility. It's the first major stop for the Luxury Jet's 2019 World Tour. Bombardier says it's the largest and longest range business jet, even as a full-size kitchen. So start saving your pennies. 
And be sure to save these dates. It's AOPA's 80th anniversary, and as part of our celebrations, we're planning three very special fly-ins. Even if you've been to a fly-in before, you'll want to attend one of these. That's because we've added a bunch of new things, including a lot more seminars. In fact, two full days of seminars. All day Friday, all day Saturday, we're going to have free seminars running all day long on a wide range of topics. Safety, uh, skills, development, uh, technology, all the cool stuff that we want to learn about in aviation. But then also, all day Friday, all day Saturday, we're going to have deep dive ground school uh, training courses, workshops, that will have a tuition fee attached to them. So for just $99, you'll buy a, a ticket to the entire weekend that you can go to these ground school courses. So there'll be eight different courses that we'll offer. You could take in up to four of them. And there'll be something different this year for the evening entertainment. We're going to call it the Flight Line Cookout. And this is going to be a, a, a true kind of backyard cookout experience right on the flight line, right out at the, uh, where the aviation is happening. We're going to go commit some aviation and have a really good time at our Friday party that will include uh, an AOPA Stoll Invitational, short takeoff and landing invitational that will be a special uh, demonstration by some of the country's best uh, backcountry flyers that are going to demonstrate right there in the middle of our party, short takeoffs and landings and so forth. At our Frederick, Maryland event, we're going to have a very special appearance of the D-Day Squadron, a whole fleet of C-47s that are on their way to Normandy, and they're going to do reenactment parachute drops right there as a part of our flight line cookout uh, experience. It certainly will be an experience. Stay tuned. We'll be giving you more information as we get closer to each fly-in. The first one is May 10th and 11th, right here in Frederick, Maryland. Well, most of the time, the wind favors runway 23 here at Frederick, but not always. And even though we always also have runway 12 and 30, there are still times when we're confronted with crosswind landings. So whether you're flying a large business jet or a spam can, you need to know how to handle the wind blowing across the runway. AOP pilot editor-at-large Dave Hirschman shows us his technique for handling crosswinds. Crosswinds make me nervous. No matter how much flight experience we gain, the only takeoff or landing that counts is this one, and it demands full attention. Ailerons into the wind and feet tapping the rudder pedals to track the center line. When the wind pushes against you, push back, be scrappy. Once airborne, the plane flies normally, but making a rectangular traffic pattern requires crabbing on downwind and the bank angle on base must be adjusted for a strong headwind or tailwind. Notice how different the ground speeds are on these two base turns. I like to lower the upwind wing to counter wind drift and touch down on the upwind wheel. On rollout, hold full deflection to keep the upwind wing from rising and keep your feet moving to track the center line. Practice helps, but don't expect perfection. As they say in the stock market, past performance is no guarantee of future results. So stay nervous. Dave Hirschman, AOPA Live. Thanks, Dave. I kind of like crosswind landings, I, I have to tell you. Um, enjoy, really? you know, the challenge a little bit of, like he says, landing on that upwind wheel and letting it roll down. And then the important point is that Dave made, and I, the place where I see uh, people often making mistakes, is then once you're down, you think, you know, phew, got that done, and then right. you take the, take the <laughs> correction out, the aileron correction out, and uh, if it's a really strong wind, then you can really get bumped around and, and even uh, slid off the side of the runway, so particularly on a narrow runway. So, and, you know, keep that flight contra or the aileron correction in all the way until you're off the runway and then all the way to the tie down, so. And great, and Dave makes it look really easy. He does. <laughs> well, coming up after the break, a historic flight for an airplane years in the making. The ADSB mandate is less than a year away. Find out what you need to know. And taking on a home build project one part at a time. Purchasing your own aircraft is an exciting experience. AOPA Finance simplifies the process, saving you money with lower interest rates and hassle-free loans, so you get into your new aircraft sooner. AOPA Finance, the right approach to buying an aircraft. Welcome back. It's all the awesome of a P-51 Mustang times two. The XB-82 twin Mustang being restored in Georgia just had its first official flight. It kind of flew accidentally after a high-speed taxi test a few weeks ago and then flew again intentionally on Monday. The official flight is another major milestone for the team led by Tom Riley, who has spent over a decade on the project. And out of potential tragedy, triumph. Thousands show up when cemetery officials say an Air Force veteran named Joseph Walker 
might not have any friends and family to attend his internment. Aviators from the area flying this missing man formation to help salute and remember the veteran. The 2020 ADSB out mandate is less than a year away, but there are still thousands of airplanes that need to equip and pilots still have questions about what the mandate means for them. AOPA pilot technical editor Mike Collins addresses the most frequently asked question. The main question is, do I have to equip? And the ADSB rule is an airspace rule, so it really comes down to where you fly. If you fly in class A, in or above class B or class C, within a mode C veil around a class B primary airport, or in the continental United States above 10,000 feet MSL, then you need to equip. And that's basically what it comes down to. Some people avoid that airspace and they won't need to equip. For pilots who are planning to equip with ADSB but are still waiting, there are many reasons to start the process now. For people who are still waiting, you really need to think through some of the potential gotchas of the ADSB rules. Uh, one that we've recently discovered is that there are dozens, if not hundreds, of instrument approach procedures to airports outside of ADSB rule airspace that cut through ADSB airspace. So those approaches after January 1st, 2020, essentially become unavailable to aircraft that are not equipped with ADSB out. Find out all you need to know about ADSB on our website, and the FAA still has thousands of $500 ADSB rebates available. Find out more about the rebate at the FAA website. There's no reason not to equip, honestly. Um, at least if you're going to be flying in rural airspace, the prices have come down. Right, they have they have come down pretty dramatically, um, and so I, I know that the shops are really backed up. Though we were trying to get one of AOPA's airplanes uh, get some avionics work done, and the soonest they could do it was September. So they are really booked out. So uh, make sure you're, you're you're kind of keeping an eye on that if you're still waiting. Plan accordingly. All right. While the mandate is for ADS-B out, many of you already have ADS-B in the system that sends weather and traffic information to you in the cockpit. When it comes to weather, you actually have two sources to choose from, free weather from Uncle Sam and subscription-based weather from Sirius XM. So, which is best for you? The AOPA Air Safety Institute has just released a new video to help you make that decision. Free is good, but hey, depending on how and where you fly, it may be worth it to pay for the satellite service. From a pilot's perspective, Sirius XM and ADS-B really look pretty similar in the cockpit, but the systems behind them are quite different. Sirius XM uses satellites, so you're getting weather from above, which means there are no altitude restrictions, no geographic coverage limitations inside the continental U.S. Basically, you can turn it on and start getting weather. ADS-B is a little bit different. ADS-B is transmitted from a network of ground stations all throughout the U.S. So sort of like VORs, altitude is going to improve your reception. If you're on the ground at an airport, it's likely you won't be getting ADS-B weather. You can find the video on the Air Safety Institute's website or on their YouTube channel. Hey, a new diesel airplane engine could be getting closer to reality. EPS announced they are nearing certification of the Gray Flight 8 engine. They expect to start some production later this year. The engine will make between 320 and 420 horsepower and can burn diesel or Jet A. The company sees it as the perfect engine for airplanes like Bonanza's and Cirrus SR-22's. The eight-cylinder engine is just the start. In the long term, the company plans to make a range of engine sizes. EPS says their new engines will have a longer TBO and better fuel economy than traditional airplane engines. Have you ever thought about building an airplane? It's no small task, and Zenith Aircraft offers potential builders the opportunity to try out the process before they commit to a full build. AOPA Live's Paul Harrop tried his hand at building a rudder. We're going to see if I can make this out of this. I've always had an interest in home building, but it's been a space, time, and money equation that never worked out for me to try it. I've pulled exactly one rivet up until this point, the original One Week Wonder in Oshkosh. The first thing you learn is to RTFM. Clico RR number two to the spar. Rudder rear rib number two is part number SD75R1-2. I'm gonna guess it's the next one up in size and that would be correct according to the material sheet. It doesn't hurt to have a bit of professional advice. Zenith's Roger Dubert giving me some guidance. Okay, this is the doubler yep. so on top. So like, oh, so like top that. Okay, gotcha. 
From there, there's just plenty of steps that take a bit of careful attention. All right, with that, we've got one side of skin riveted on. We're ready to flip it and Clico and rivet the other side. This is actually not as bad as I thought it would be. It's, it's fun once you get into the rhythm of it. In all, if you can read a material sheet, follow step-by-step -step directions, and work some basic tools, I am convinced you, like me, scary enough, can build an airplane. All right. Hooray! Yay! All right, now we have a rudder assembly for a CH750 Super Duty. Look at that. That looks like an airplane part. You know, a few hours, you had a bunch of parts, now you got an actual assembly. Yeah. It, it's lightweight and strong and uh, awesome. All right, now you gotta sell me the rest of the kit and hey, I gotta put it together. One step at a time, that's right. In Mexico, Missouri, Paul Harrop, AOPA Live. You can learn more about the Zenith aircraft on their website. I'm not sure that I want to fly in an airplane that Paul helped build. I, have to tell you. <laughs> I wasn't gonna say anything, Tom. <laughs> we love you, Paul. <laughs> and that's it for our show this week. We leave you this week with a video of a flight over Maui. AOPA's Western Pacific Regional Manager, Melissa McCaffrey, recently flew there and sent back this video to make us all very jealous. Mm -hmm.